Hey, thank you for taking time to watch this sermon. We have prayed that you'd be blessed by it. Uh, we want you to know, too, we believe that this is really supplemental uh, to your, your experience in the life of a local church. But if you're here in the Dallas area, we hope you'll come and join us and be with us for worship. We pray this blesses your life and you're drawn closer to Christ as a result of this message. I wonder, some of you kids may have a special um, hope for Christmas time this year. Some of you adults probably have some great hopes for Christmas. Maybe you look back on Christmas days like me when you received a special gift. Maybe it was your favorite stuffed animal. Or if you're really young, maybe it was your favorite blanket that you pass on from generation to generation and you hang on to it. Some of you may have, sure enough, when you were really little, each of our kids received um, kind of a newborn blanket, you know, right, right out of the nursery, right out of the hospital. And uh, probably, frankly, as parents, we probably kept pushing it on them. Like, you just hang on to that. And don't grow up, please. And then kids grow up. And what happens is, you know, a lot of kids, sure enough, we have our favorite little security blanket that we carry around with us. Um, and that's really cute when you're a little child. Um, if you're an adult... Um, that's therapy, is, is what that is. You know, that's, there's a need for intervention uh, for, from friends who love you. You show up at 30, 40 years old, 60 years old, show up in the boardroom or a meeting with your security blanket. That's it's just awkward, is what that is. But sadly, many of us simply exchange our security blanket for other things in our lives. As adults, it might be a job, it may be a 401k, a retirement. We find security and peace finally in a person, perhaps, maybe a spouse. Maybe it's found in our kids. We seek identity and value and worth and finally peace in my soul. If I could only have this or hold on to this, maybe it's our health. Could be a lot of things. You see, there's nothing wrong with a blanket. A blanket is a good thing. It's comfortable. It's nice. Keeps us warm. And has such sweet memories when we hold on to it. And yet, if we cling to those things long enough, the Bible tells us that they will, in fact, kill us, not bring life, not bring peace. Here's the Christmas Eve message today. And it may sound radical to some. If you seek peace in anything apart from Christ himself, you will never release yourself of the anxieties and the worry that mark your life. Because you see, peace on earth begins with peace in the heart. And peace in the heart is given by God himself. We receive peace only when we have peace with God. And, and so today I want to challenge you. Here's the great challenge. Here's what it is. It's going to be this. Drop. Drop your blanket. That's my Christmas challenge to all of us, whatever that blanket might be. Now, some of you, like me, uh, at this time of the year, all things nostalgic and all memories and Christmas and, gosh, Christ at the center of it all collide. There's nothing better than Christmas. Some of you, a couple of weeks ago, maybe you saw that for the 52nd year in a row at primetime, on primetime television, a Christmas, a Charlie Brown Christmas was on television. Now, some of you know where I'm heading with this, but if you've seen this, how many of y'all have seen the Charlie Brown Christmas? Yeah. If you're my age, you kind of grew up with it, or even if you're not, you passed it on to your kids, and now they watch it, perhaps, and they'll probably watch it with their kids. And in an age of technology, ever-changing Pixar films, social media platforms changing every month. Anything for 52 years is an amazing thing. But in this great story, you know that the central figure, of course, is Charlie Brown, always. And there's a point at which he cries out, does anyone know what Christmas is all about? Friends, our world is crying out today. I can look out and see that there are cars driving by Northwest Highway right now, and they have no intention of stopping in a church parking lot. They're probably heading to the mall. Maybe they're receiving gifts or giving gifts, but Christ is not at all at the center of their Christmas. 
And you know that moment, it's a fascinating moment, when Linus steps up onto the, to the, in the pageant and he quotes the passage that Linda quoted earlier out of Luke chapter 2. About a year ago, I discovered something, having seen this uh, show for many years, something I did not know. I was reminded of it recently. Linus is up there. You know, he's, of course, Charlie's best friend. And uh, he has an older sister who's Lucy, who's Charlie's nemesis. And the thing about Linus, he is the one who's kind of the philosopher, the mature one among the group. But we all know there's that one thing that marks him, right? What is it? His ever-present security blanket, which is brilliant on the part of Charles Schultz. Something happens. Charlie and, and Linus always together. But as Linus steps up on that stage... He quotes out of Luke 2, and when he gets to the announcement of the angel, something amazing happens. Charles Schultz, who was a committed believer, I think does this on purpose. It's intentional, and it's so brilliant, so simple, that if you've seen it a million times, you may have missed it. You see, Linus can never depart. He cannot release his blanket. Even in the midst of ridicule, he will continue to cling to it and hold on to it until he doesn't. Right when he quotes the angel, fear not. The moment he says, fear not, Linus drops his blanket. And I think the message for all of us is this. Jesus separates us from our fears. Jesus releases us from our insecurities. The coming of Christ means that peace has come and we can finally experience this peace on earth will never come until it comes to our hearts, each one of us. And today on this day of days, the Christmas Eve message is that you would release those things that you are clinging to for security. Because you see, His peace doesn't simply come We must release all things that we tend to run to. Drop your blanket. Whatever that may be. Maybe a habit that you've formed. Maybe you've been clinging to the stuff of this world. And Jesus penetrates our lives. He comes. In fact, it says in Isaiah, longing for the Savior to come, he says that his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I love what the angel says to Joseph in Matthew 121. His name shall be called Jesus. Listen to the names given to him. Yeshua, which means God, God saves He rescues us from the fleeting temporal stuff of this world that we run to for peace and comfort and security. And then the angels join in. He says in in Matthew 121, he continues on. He says that his name will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Friends, he didn't just come on that first Christmas. He's with us every day. Those of us who've received his grace, his spirit lives in us. And we can live our lives in constant peace as we recognize that He alone brings peace to us. We can drop our insecurities and our fears. And we can live with courage. You know, 2017, our world is a scary place to be. And I'm guessing in your own personal lives, relationally, maybe you're struggling to experience peace in your heart. Maybe your life is marked by anxiety and worry. I want to challenge you to drop your blanket wherever you tend to run. Even if your life is busy and full to the brim, you can experience anxiety as we run to things that will never satisfy us. The the angels joined the one and in Luke 2 said, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And he's pleased with those who've received his grace. Friends, we can't do anything to gain God's approval. And the beautiful thing in Christ as we receive his grace is that we discover we already have his approval. He lived the perfect life for us so that we wouldn't have to because we couldn't. He died on the cross 
so that we could experience his grace. Paul said in Colossians 1, 19 and 20, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Jesus came so that you could have peace. Those, that, that all things, to reconcile all things, includes you and me. Have you received his grace? Are you living in that peace that comes first between you and God? A holy God redeems us, gives us his spirit, that we might drop our blankets and turn to him and cling to the only thing that is always and will ever give us peace. Turn to Christ. Jesus dropped his blanket so that we could drop ours. Paul says in Philippians 2, 6, he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, literally to cling to. But he dropped it. He left it. He became a man, not just a man, became a baby, the most vulnerable creature on the planet. Dropped his strength to become weak, so that you and I could receive his grace. He lived the perfect life, and when he went to Golgotha, they stripped him. He took on our shame, punishment due us. He took it upon himself. He conquered death and hell. He rose again so that we might follow him and stop clinging to the fleeting temporal things we run to in this world. Friend, if you want to experience peace, Give your heart to Jesus. And if you've never received his grace, today is your day. It's why you came. You'll never know peace until you give your heart to him. The promise of Christmas is this, the words of Jesus in John 14. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Fear not. For Christ, the Prince of Peace, has come. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that we can drop our respective blankets, those things we cling to for security and comfort, hope and love, and we can turn to you. And thank you, Lord, that when we do, when we say yes to you, that you cover us with the blanket of your righteousness that we might live forgiven and finally experience peace by trusting in you. Lord, I pray for those who have never received your grace, even now, by an act of faith. Friend, listen, say yes to him right now with your head bowed, eyes closed. Give your heart to Jesus. Drop all that you have sought to bring peace and turn to the one who is our peace. And Lord, I pray for every family, every person here on this Christmas Eve that each one might receive a peace and experience peace that comes from you alone, a peace that surpasses our understanding even in the midst of challenging days and for many, some of the most challenging of our lives. We can trust you. We can experience your peace because you have come to us. And Lord, as we now enter into the lighting of the candles, we're reminded that on that holy night, you came to bring us peace, that we might receive your light of peace and share it with others so that there might truly be peace on earth. We give you our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for taking time to watch this sermon. If you would like more information about our church or following Jesus, please go to our website, pcbc.org, or contact our church offices. We hope to see you next week at church.